Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Well, with the regional reset this week, the same faction battlegrounds will go back to the way it used to be. And it appears as though it has been a roaring success, and I would be absolutely amazed if this does not go live in the game, in some format at least. I can't imagine any Horde player saying, no, my queues are just too short, I wish I had those near hour queues back. I can barely go and make a snack in between the instant pop battlegrounds anymore. So great, now Horde have access to something that had previously only been an alliance thing. Also as another small side note and benefit to this, non-level cap and non alteric Valley Battlegrounds should also now be much more active as well, which is again, great. And as this positive thing has happened, the population continues to slip more towards the Reds. All the talk so far around this subject has really focused on the PvP side of things, and that's where the update has been focused. Horde are seen to have the overall better racial abilities there. There were players who felt as though the Alliance queue times were about all they had going left for themselves, saying at least we could get our honor sets reasonably fast, which is not a privilege for just the Alliance anymore. Then again, saying faster honor sets is the benefit we have is like saying humans are the best PvE race in the game because they're going to get to Exalted before anybody else so they can get their epics faster, which makes them the best. Well, not quite. Other races will get there too. It's just going to take them a bit longer. And then who is the best in the end? Even though for PvP, it's obviously a much longer grind. Though your preferences towards PvP racials may be debatable, and you can argue in certain matchups, overall the alliance is better. You know where they aren't better? PvE. And I believe a much larger proportion of the player base engages with PvE content on a regular basis compared to PvP. This has happened to be true in retail over the years as well, with each new patch being centered around the new raid, the new zone, the new advancement of the lore, and PvP is kind of there as a, yeah, I guess this is here to do as well if you'd like to. It feels like an area of the game that hasn't really grown too much since Arena was introduced all the way back in, well, where we are at the moment, TBC. Anyways, I want to check some numbers so you can sort of see where I'm coming from with this. The regional faction composition for 2s in EU and NA adds up to around 25k players overall, and it's much the same story in 3s and 5s. This is from JustFar.com. On Warcraft logs, there are over 12,000 guilds with some form of progress within Karazhan, making up about 120,000 players. And over in 25 mans, over 10,000 guilds with some form of progress, so around 250k players. And the reason 25 mans looks like so much more on progress is because on Warcraft logs, your first guild kill is going to count for the overall guild kill. So your 25 man after you're finished with Magtheridon, going into Karazhan to do two or three runs at the same time, isn't going to count as two or three runs it'll just be one if that all makes sense so it seems to me at least that there are a lot more pve oriented players in the game overall that is why even if you were to actually give humans every man for himself in this expansion right now tomorrow if you were to nerf will of the forsaken i don't actually think it's going to make much of a difference whatsoever as that's not what the majority of the player base is engaging with on a regular basis if you were to look forwards to wrath of the lich king to look at how racials are in that point in time as if that may solve the problem by itself it won't in fact it gets even worse berserking from trolls gets buffed in my opinion at least from 10 to 30 percent haste to just a flat 20 which is better because it's more consistent and you can align it with your cooldowns. You don't need to be at a certain health percentage. You just press the button and then press other buttons and go. Orcs expertise for one and two handed axes stays at fives and is extended to fist weapons as well and command and blood fury stay the same. Human expertise on maces and swords is actually lowered to three. So the PvE bias towards the horde will actually grow naturally even if Blizzard don't do anything else with time. Now, I know plenty of the Zugs out there have rolled Horde because you like them, or that's what you played back then, and that's fine. I did that too. I had a known Warlock back in vanilla on the live game too, with a really edgy name, might I add. But numbers look as though players in TBC Classic are trending more towards the Horde. And it's not for one singular reason, but many combined that make it the overall more appealing faction. After all, it's an MMORPG. Your choice of character and faction should have some bearing in the actual game which is why I like the racial bonuses that exist within the game. I don't want every race to be this bland, grey, indistinguishable template. I wouldn't even want them removed in instance PvP either. I think it's cool you have to play differently around different races. It's that little bit extra of the toolkit that the player chose when making their character. 
it's just when one side becomes pretty clearly better in all regards, you have a harder and harder time justifying things staying the way that they are. This is why following the big battleground change, maybe it is actually time to take a look at factions and try and make Alliance a bit more appealing to play. I think that Alliance need to have A, stronger racials for PvE content, and B, more incentives to queue normal battlegrounds. Concern is that I can understand why Blizzard stepped in for the battleground change because it was becoming over an hour queues for the Reds, making an area of the game very difficult to play for the more casual audience. Racial bonuses at the moment don't present a strong case where you can make an area of the game difficult to play. You aren't prevented from raiding or PvPing because you chose a Night Elf Warrior or a Tauren Hunter, but the thing that led to this situation arising is partially because of the choices people have made where they trend towards what is the quote-unquote best race-class combo they can make. I think Blizzard would only intervene if they perceive the long-term faction balance as having a significant impact on the average player's enjoyment of the game, which if retail historically has told us anything, they don't. This would of course constitute an absolutely colossal change to TBC. It's unimaginable to think this kind of thing being brought up back at the start of Classic, you would have been absolutely buried between naysayers. But I think it's fair to say over time that times change. Of course people who don't like X, Y, Z change will always bandwagon the I told you so at a drop of a hat, we should have never had any changes to begin with. And if they had had their way right now, I would have got dual crafting, made my dual crafting gems for my spell strike pants, Taken Enchanted to enchant my Abyss Rings, retaken Leatherworking and Tailoring for Drums and the Frozen Shadowy Boots, and gone and picked up my Spell Damage Botanica buff, then headed outside Gruul's Lair and Raid Logged on Raid Day. Sounds pretty fun, right? Free faction transfers from majority to minority has less and less compelling reasons unless you have friends on the opposite faction that you'd like to play with. Faction queues would have to have been in from the get-go. Furthermore, I'm not even sure if Blizzard could willingly implement a system that would withhold the literal ability to play the game for a certain demographic of the player base without running into issues around not providing the service that people are paying for whatsoever. Server merges, free transfers, they don't really change anything in the long run. It's good that Horde can finally be able to enjoy Battlegrounds. I just hope the criticism which has started this off isn't buried and lost on the way. And in the very off chance that this somehow doesn't make it to live, the Battleground change that is, what I'm talking about here still kind of stands. Finally, whilst the population may look fairly even overall on Blizzard's end, as in it's close enough to 50-50 between people of all level ranges doing all areas of content, people will generally gravitate towards the faction which has more people engaging with the harder end game content. And as more people join them, it is very much a trickle down effect towards people looking for guilds, not being able to recruit people, swapping over to different factions, which no, we don't have the ability to do the paid service for that yet. That was initially brought in Wrath of the Lich King. Who knows, we might see it early, but if it's uninhibited, again, that's going to really just crush the Alliance even further than is already happening. If we're going to have servers which are built upon communities, which don't have sharding, which don't have cross-realm zones, factions are a very important feature in that. We're already seeing on a bunch of different servers, especially PvP ones that Horde are starting to really take them over, and Alliance players are transferring away to majority Alliance PvP servers or PvE. And I think sharding and cross-realm zones is one of those things which there'd be a pretty unanimous uprising against if it ever did come to that point. So that is why I think factions matter. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.